All right, so I want to talk about We Play because I mean I've got like nothing else going on at the moment. So uh, We Play has always been a companion title to Wii Sports, both games being developed alongside each other and showcased to E3 2006 as tech demos before being released as launch titles for the Wii console. Unless you live in North America, in which case you had to wait an extra couple months to get a hold of this game. Although being a companion title to Wii Sports, I feel like it's never been held in the same regard and height as Wii Sports. I always had the impression that Wii Play has been seen as the lesser of the two games, and I'm not entirely sure why. I personally enjoyed Wii Play more as a kid, although now that I'm older, I hold both Wii Sports and Wii Play in the same regard. But enough comparing Wii Play to Wii Sports. So, Wii Play, much like Wii Sports- DANG IT! <sighs> Much like Wii Sports being a tech demo game to show off the Wii's motion control capabilities, Wii Play was released to be a tech demo to show off the Wii's infrared pointer capabilities, which is why these games are perfect companion titles, each getting to show off one of the new core gimmicks of the Wii's primary controller. Now, Wii Play ended up selling really good for the console, being the Wii's fifth best-selling game overall. However, the reviews for the game almost contradict that. We Play received ratings around 50 to 60%, which begs the question of how did this become the fifth best selling Wii game? It cheated. Yeah, this game was bundled in with a Wiimote controller for a total of $50 brand new, and at the time a Wiimote controller was costing $40, which basically meant you were getting Wii Play for $10. People didn't really buy Wii Play, they bought a new Wiimote that came with a cheap $10 game. But enough of this beating around the bush, what the heck even is a Wii Play? Well, similar to Wii Sports- DANG IT! Not again with the Wii Sports comparisons. <sighs> Wii Play is a minigame compilation at the end of the day, with the main focus being to show off the Wii Mote's pointer controls and capabilities, so you know what that means! I'm gonna get to go through a rundown of every single minigame in this collection and give you my opinions and thoughts on each of them because I have no idea how to structure this Wii Play discussion otherwise. Alright, so first up, a tried and true classic in gaming. Duck Hunt, I mean shooting range. Shooting Range is a reimagining of the classic NES game Duck Hunt, just with noticeably less Nintendo Zapper action. There are a total of five different levels in this minigame, each with a different feel from the last. The first level is shooting balloons that will float up from the bottom of the level. The second level is a bunch of targets that will randomly pop up for you to shoot, some being worth more points that are golden and some being worth negative points with your Mii's face on them. Level 3 is some clay pigeons that fly away to you, similar to how skeet shooting works in real life. Level 4 is probably the most interesting, being cans that fly onto the screen and you have to shoot them to keep them in the air longer and rack up a higher score. And finally, level 5 has a bunch of your Mii's running around, trying not to get abducted by UFOs while you are fighting off the aliens. A real 180 from the shooting cans in the previous level. And all the while, there are occasional ducks that fly across the screen that resemble the ducks from Duck Hunt. Overall, this is a simple minigame that perfectly shows off the Wii's pointer feature on the Wiimote. However, most people criticize this game for being too short, I personally think the length of the game is good, especially for a high score based minigame, but it would be nice if there was some more side modes, like an endurance one that you would try and keep the can in the air as much as possible, or even a full blown duck hunt mode that was just the ducks flying across the screen. But once again, this is just one minigame in a collection that really only cost $10, so I feel like it's fair to say what we got here wasn't that bad, but it did have more potential for the idea. Next is Table Tennis, and to reluctantly bring up Wii Sports again, thankfully Table Tennis plays differently from regular tennis in that game, or even in Wii Sports Resort's Table Tennis mode. Instead of using motion controls, you point your controller at the screen to where your paddle wants to be. It's really fun, and the speed of the game gradually gets faster and faster the higher your rally gets. Your goal is to end up with a rally of 100 where the game will stop you, but this will unlock the quote unquote endless mode of the game, with the rally count stopping at 999 and a special message congratulating anyone bored enough to waste their time doing that. It is really satisfying to hold the high rally count and see how long you can go and rack up a high score. I used to despise this game as a kid because of how terrible I was at it, but it's not all that difficult to play once you kind of get a feel for how the game works, getting used to the pointer controls over motion controls. This is a very fun high score based game that is sadly also very forgettable in the end with just how little the game has to offer. Something the next game cannot say for itself, Pose Me. And I don't mean in the French girl kind of way. Pose Me is probably one of the more remembered mini games from Wii Play for many different reasons. This game perfectly shows off everything about the Wii controller. Pointer controls, basic motion controls, and the unique button layout of the controller. Nearly everything in one simple and easy to understand fun minigame. The objective is to orientate your Mii in a way that it will fit into shapes that show up on bubbles that pop onto the screen. 
You can point to move your Mii, twist the controller to, well, twist and rotate your Mii, and press the buttons to change between poses. It is fast paced, frantic, and straight up fun. Once again, this game starts out slow, but it begins to ramp up in speed and difficulty the further you get. The thing that stands out the most about this game is the bizarre pictures that show up as backgrounds for the stages. Mostly it's just different pictures of flowers, but then there would be full-blown real pictures of birds and ducks. It is truly amazing. You can easily get sucked into trying to get high scores because every time you fail, it's kind of that feeling of, if only I'd moved a bit quicker, if only my reflexes were a little bit better, or I could definitely do better next time. It's a really addictive game and one of the better ones that we play has to offer overall. Unfortunately, however, following up Pose Me is easily the worst game in the collection, at least in my opinion, Laser Hockey. This is the Wii's remake of an absolute classic, Pong, except they ruined everything there is about air hockey. Instead of describing the game, since we all know how air hockey works, I'm just going to complain about it instead. The game controls terribly. Half of the points the opponent scores are just because I accidentally knocked the puck into my own goal. There feels like there is no force behind every hit you try to hit off. You kind of just try and push the puck around instead of trying to actually hit it. And the environment just feels really empty and bland with just a single theme. Also, yeah, I'm just uh, bad at this game, so I'm going to deflect that and blame it on the game being bad instead. Okay, next. Billards is exactly what it says and nothing more. It is a simple 9-ball game of pool that you play using the Wii controller's pointer and motion capabilities. There really isn't much to say about this. I enjoy it and it's pretty fun and handles well, but with no opponents to play against unless you're playing in multiplayer, there's really no reason to keep coming back to this game. Although your Mii's face is on the cue ball, so that's kind of funny to just get to smack that around, but besides that, yeah, it's just basic pool game. Okay, can I make a confession to you that's probably unpopular? I absolutely love fishing in Wii Play. I have absolutely no idea why this is, but it has always been my go-to favorite minigame in Wii Play. It's not even that mechanically complicated. The game is basically just trying to catch as many fish as you can with the time limit, and trying to catch the fish side of the most high scoring. Every so often there'll be a fish that you can catch that will deduct points, but those are kind of easy to avoid as long as you're being careful. It is as basic as it gets when it comes to arcade fishing games, but something has always really resonated with me with this game. The art style is cute and unique, and the gameplay is fast-paced enough that it doesn't really drag on, and the high-score nature of the game is addicting. Yeah, I swear, my serotonin levels skyrocket any time the special fish spawns in, and I have the high I feel when I catch it. Oh, just wow. Amazing gameplay. My final review being a 7.8. Too much water. The next game is a bit of a strange one to say the least. Not only does it not showcase any pointer feature controls at all, but just overall the game is extremely weird. Of course, I am talking about Charge. You know Charge, right? The game where you ride a cow through an arts and craft field mowing down as many scarecrows as possible before reaching the goal. Of course you do! Who doesn't know Charge? Seriously though, I want to know what that board meeting was like for this game. The fact that it doesn't use any pointer controls is strange enough as to why it's in Wii Play in the first place, let alone all the creative decisions made along the way. It is in no way a bad minigame though, it's actually quite fun to be honest. It does get pretty old pretty quick, especially trying to go for high scores since it can be really annoying if you miss a scarecrow. But I remember as a kid playing this with my brother just dying in laughter at the sheer absurdity of this game and how funny it was. I also like to think this is where the true origin for the arts and crafts inspiration of the art style for future games like Kirby's Epic Yarn and Yoshi's Woolly World is. But of course, you simply cannot discuss We Play without mentioning the absolute classic minigame, Tanks. Easily the most beloved and remembered part of the We Play package, and why most people even bother returning to this game after all these years. This is a minigame that you could easily have made into its own fleshed out release with just a little bit more effort put into it. So, let me come out and just say that I don't really like this game. Wait, 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 before you come after me, let me just say it's entirely because I am bad at this game. I definitely can say that this game is objectively the best game in the package, there's no doubt about that. I just don't think I'm patient enough to really put up with the arcadey aspects of the game. With very minimal lives and no continue option, I struggle to make it to some of the farther levels. But that is all a problem on my side of the gaming experience and not a fault of the game on its own. Overall though, Tanks has an initial 20 stages and if you were able to beat those you can return to the game and play through a total of 100 stages with stages past 20 beginning to randomize the arenas and which tanks will spawn. 
I won't get too much into it, but there are plenty of different enemy tanks with different abilities, all laid out in this toy box aesthetic arena for you to fight through. This is also the only game in the Wii play package to require you to use the nunchuck attachment for the Wiimote. Overall, I say that Wii Tanks is still a lot of fun regardless of how I personally feel about the game. And I know it has its hardcore fan base out there too that will defend this game to the ends of the earth, and I can't blame them, it is a solid game overall. And that is Wii Play, all 9 of the original minigames. For the value of the game being around $10 at the time of release, I can't say that this was a horrible deal at all. Each minigame can be replayed over and over to try and go for better high scores, and each minigame also offers a chance to test your skills for medals, either bronze, silver, gold, or platinum, with a platinum medal showcasing the highest skill level you can achieve in a minigame. There is also a lot of charm to this game. The Miis have a lot of their own character, and the overall game is a very warm feeling that is reminiscent of early Wii games. Perhaps that's just simply nostalgia. But the story of Wii Play does not end here. Much like Wii Sports, the success of Wii Play would eventually spawn a sequel. A sequel that would go on to become a very bane of my existence. A plague on my gaming library. The sequel that I am talking about is, of course, Wii Play Motion. I hate this game. Genuinely. I don't know why, but when this game was announced and it was released, I was so excited and asked for it for Christmas the year it came out, and boy let me tell you the sheer disappointment I had with this game. It was nothing like the original Wii Play. I know that game was mediocre, but come on, We Play Motion was outsold by a knockoff game, Game Party. For a little bit more backstory on this, We Play Motion was really similar to how Wii Sports Resort was. There was a new iteration of the Wii Mo with new motion sensing capabilities, so we needed a new tech game to show this off. Except that's all that was added, so having two tech demo games to show off the new motion control capabilities means one of them was going to be redundant, and guess which one was? Overall, from the very beginning, Wii Play Motion had no purpose or direction. And to make matters worse, there was as many developers on this game as there was many games in the original Wii Play. Did it really take eight other developers to make the game because Nintendo was too busy perfecting teeter targets? Alright, so this time we've got 12 mini games to go through, but before that, what is this? Why'd you get rid of the me in the middle of the screen? You have the same game menu layout. Heck, you even have the same menu music, but you don't have the me standing in the middle and instead it's the game preview? The original game had a preview pop up when you would hover over the icon. It just made so much more sense. This is just taking away the charm of the game. <sighs> okay, but anyways, while we are off to an already bad start, let's hop into Cone Zone. This is a simple game of keeping the tower balanced for as long as you can as more and more scoops of ice cream are added. It's not a bad game necessarily, but I did also just sum it up with one sentence and there's, there's really not much else to say about the game besides that. It can be fun to play with friends and see who can get the highest score, but the replay value is really low on this one. There is a second game mode with the soft serve ice cream where you have to swirl it into a cone, and I personally think that is much more enjoyable to play. Next up is Veggie Garden, but not garden as in garden, it's garden as in guarding, cause you're guarding a garden. It's a pun. This is the game that completely ruined Wii Play Motion for me when I was a kid. Remember that Wii Play Motion was to show off the motion controls and not pointer controls, which for this minigame pointer controls would make much more sense. But when you have to move the hammer around on the screen, it's not by pointing, so it feels really bad. Now I'm a lot better at this game and even went so far as to beat it my first time ever, but that doesn't make me like it anymore. It is a whack-a-mole game, but the gameplay boils down to just spamming the hammer around on every hole the second you see something move. But here's the real problem. There are tons of opportunities to lose points in this if you hit the wrong thing. And the points you lose from hitting a bad target are way more than the points you would gain from hitting a good one, even with a bonus. It is insanely punishing. My biggest complaint about the game is basically the controls, and just how unfair and punishing it can be. Also, the game just drags out, it is really boring and repetitive to play. I beat it that once and I have no inclination to ever go back to it again. Skip Skinner is the game I will never learn how to properly control. Like, I can sometimes get it, but it's never reliable. Although I do not blame the game for this one because I know some people can get really insane skips with high points. Basically, pick your rock and throw it and bounce it as much as possible across the water. It is simple and fun when you get a good throw. The real noteworthy part of this minigame, however, is the score mode where you're giving perfectly shaped rocks to throw down a course with point rings and a goal to land on. Next up after Skip Skinner is Pose Me Plus. And if it's all the same with you, I would rather not speak of Pose Me Plus and it is inferiority to the original, so moving on. 
Trigger Twist is the sequel to Shooting Range, and I'd rather not speak of this minigame either, but I will suffer through this one. Trigger Twist on paper is much better than Shooting Range, but in execution, it is not nearly as good. Motion controls for something that used pointer controls in the 1980s. This is not how you play a shooting game. You would never play Call of Duty on an Xbox Kinect, would you now? I give props for having the varied and expanded stages to get to play through, but the controls absolutely ruin any fun that can even be conjured up from this minigame. It's just completely undone and brought down by motion controls. Horrible design choice, and they honestly should have stuck with pointer controls even though it wouldn't match the motion theme of We Play Motion. Next up we have Jump Park, and I really don't know what to say about Jump Park. Out of all the We Play and We Play Motion games, this is the one that I was most bored playing. I was hardly thinking and just going through the motions. Every level I played felt the same with very minor, if even noticeable, differences. I can't say the minigame was bad, but it is. This is the most mediocre game in the entire series, just from how safe and basic it is. However, following that up is the legendary, Nintendo-developed minigame, Teeter Targets. This is the tanks of We Play Motion, and not just because it has a toy box aesthetic. There are 30 total stages in challenge mode, but you can also play a few different variations of endless mode. You use the Wiimote to control the paddles and try and flick the ball into goals on each stage. It's simple and it's fun. And it's really satisfying to perfectly flick a ball at the exactly how you wanted it to reach the goal. I have no complaints about this game and I would say it's probably the best that this package has to offer. It's fun and enjoyable to play. I ended up getting sucked in and trying to beat as many stages as I could. I didn't really go for platinum, but I did get pretty far in before I decided to quit. But I may have gotten a little too far ahead of myself when I said Teeter Target is the best Wii Play Motion has to offer because now we have Spooky Search, which is really fun and a unique way to show off the Wii Mote as a controller. In this game, you play as a Ghostbuster who just absolutely refuses under any circumstances to turn around. So now you have to wave the controller around your head and try and find where the ghosts are at. When you find a ghost, you have to grab it and bring it around in front of you and suck it into the ghost chamber. I don't know what else to call this thing. If you were playing with a friend, it is much better and way more fun, but even by yourself, this game is really fun to play. There are different stages with different difficulties to play through, but just when you thought things were starting to look up for Wii Play Motion, it's only downhill from here with the rest of the minigames. Windrunner has you holding an umbrella and wearing roller skates to use the wind to propel you down a course. Sounds crazy, sounds fun, it's neither of those. For me at least personally, the game controls poorly and the physics never feel quite right. There's a few different modes to play through, but everything kind of just feels the same with little to no variation at all. I think that the wiki page sums it up best by saying, quote unquote, Windrunner is one of the mini games available on Wii Play Motion on the Wii. I kid you not, that is all it says. After Windrunner, we have Treasure Twirl, and I pray to god I never have to say those two titles next to each other again. I don't really know how I feel about this game. On one hand, the concept is really fun and enjoyable to play, but on the other hand, it is really annoying and unsatisfying to play. Maybe I'm just missing something with this game, but it really just boils down to doing the same thing every round, and there's really nothing that makes this game special after the first time you play it. Very forgettable and sadly underwhelming, because the concept is amazing here. So next up we have something very special, something that extremely few video games are capable of achieving, but Flutterfly has done it. This minigame has successfully replicated what being water tortured must feel like. I swear, the controls for this are so wonky and terrible, and on top of that I think I have carpal tunnel from playing this minigame. I also have acquired a newfound fear of crows chasing me with no end to throw them off my trail. It's a bad minigame, hands down, there's no redeeming qualities about this one. I mean, I guess like the art style, but it's also very extremely generic. It's like you took those bubble segments from Super Mario Galaxy where you use the pointer as a fan, but replace the pointer, which works great, with poorly implemented motion controls, and thus you have Flutterfly. And finally, the last minigame in We Play Motion, Star Shuttle. This minigame is actually pretty good, and I think it is one of the best that this package has to show off for motion controls. It can just be really frustrating and annoying to play. You have to orientate the Wiimote in such a way that it matches up with the docking position on the large spaceship, while trying at the same time to manage the speed of how fast you are docking the part. It's stressful in a very manageable way, and it's very satisfying to see the main space station build up over time as you complete level after level. 
The problem with the minigame is just with how jank it can be sometimes, and with just how boring it can also be. It is a really good concept and pretty well execution, I just think with a few changes with pace and gameplay that it could be much much better. And that's all 12 minigames in Wii Play Motion. Like in the previous game, you can earn medals of bronze, silver, gold, and platinum in each minigame, and unlocking all gold and then all of platinum in minigames will unlock a couple of title screen minigames you can play as well. I had no clue that was a thing until looking at the wiki page for this, but hey, the more you know, am I right? We Play Motion was bundled with the Wiimote, with the Wiimote Plus similar to how We Play was bundled. Meaning that, once again, this was a Wiimote bundled with a cheap game, so I guess although I hate this game, I can't complain that much about it in the end. Except as a kid, I didn't want the Wiimote, I wanted the sequel to We Play. This game disappointed and still continues to disappoint me as a low part in not only the Wii Play series but as an overall Wii collection of games. I had high hopes for this game, but the lack of direction and splitting up the minigames to different developers hurt the game in the end. I think that after Wii Play Motion, it is obvious why Nintendo has left behind the Wii Play games in favor of Wii Sports. However, I feel that Wii Play lives on in certain ways, with Nintendo Land on the Wii U and even more recently with Clubhouse Games on the Switch. I doubt that we will ever see a return of the Wii Play series like we have with Wii Sports, but that is okay. While not the best games that the Wii ever had to offer, they served the exact purpose they needed to, being a tech demo to showcase the Wiimote. While I think that the original did this better than Wii Play Motion, it's important to remember these games for what they were and not expect too much from them at the end of the day. But that does not excuse Pose Me Plus for being such a sorry excuse for a sequel to the original minigame.